today on Outside the Box Reviews, we've got another fight in our hands. It's Figure Wars. Today we are looking at the Friday the 13th. Part 3 in 3D, Jason Voorhees. So uh, put on your magical YouTube 3D glasses. Um, eh, maybe not. I guess that's not exactly going to work. But yeah, here we have three figures. Three is a, a new one for us here. Really, we're comparing two overall figures. We have the 2009 release of the Mezco Cinema of Fear Series 4, Part 3 Jason. And we have the 2012 release of the NECA Part 3 Jason. Now, NECA's version came with two different variants. We have the clean and the bloody version. So, we're going to take a look at all three of these figures and see how they stack up. First off, we're going to take a look at the accessories for Mezco's Jason. As you would expect with any self-respecting Jason figure, he comes with his machete. This is a pretty nice one out of Mezco. I do like it. The handle has a nice shape to it. I like that it has the little curved part out here at the end. It has some indentations on the handles, mostly here at the bottom. It looks like it should be a rivet, but there's no actual paint detail in it, and it's only on the one side. So it could actually be more of a defect than anything else. The blade is a nice silvery color. It has some blood on it, though I don't like the way the blood's done. It looks like it was just dipped in blood. There's no real realistic pattern, and there's kind of like this airbrushed marks coming off here. It just doesn't look particularly realistic. But the shape of the machete is good. It also fits in Jason's hand really well, really snugly, which is always a plus. Mr. Voorhees also comes with an axe. It's a very, very long-handled axe, iconic from the end of the movie. It has some blood here at the end, which is nice, and a nice silver head to it. It actually feels fairly sharp. It gets very, very thin here at the point of it, which is cool. I do very much like the wood grain they gave it. A lot of good sculpting and paint texture. Gotta appreciate that. Once again, Jason holds it pretty well. He'll actually hold it in both hands as well, which is cool. You can have them with both hands on the handle, which is pretty nice to have that option. Next, we'll look at the accessories that come with NECA's Jasons. Now, both Jasons come with a machete, which is as to be expected. It's kind of cool. They gave us a little different paint apps. Here we have the clean version of Jason. It has a clean machete. I like the shape of this as well. A very classic shape. The handle's really well done. It's got the painted rivets. It's got the little sticking out part here at the bottom. It's a very nice shape and a very cool looking machete. There's a little slop on that silver paint, but overall, pretty nice. If we bring in the Mezco machete, we can see it is a fair amount smaller, however. The Battle Damage Jason actually comes with a bloody machete, and I very much like the blood work on this. It looks more natural and random on there, like he actually has been hacking up people. It's a nice color as well. It's a darker red, not such a harsh red like the Mezco was. And this side, it's all down. It looks like he's plunged that blade into someone, which is really cool. Jason holds the machete okay. He could hold it better. It doesn't sit in his hand quite right, I don't think. But it still works well. Now, the non-battle damage Jason comes with his spear gun. And I am so excited that we got this. It's the first weapon Jason uses after putting on his iconic hockey mask. He's got his little silver trigger down here. Turn it over, we can see it has the mechanism that you'd put the elastic on to pull it back, you know, to fire. It has the spear itself in here. It's really well detailed. I am afraid that if this thing falls, it's going to break the tip off the spear, which would be a bummer. But still a really nice spear gun. He holds it pretty well. I do wish he could actually put his finger through the trigger here. He can't, it just says underneath. 
And that's a little bit of a disappointment. But overall, I think it's really cool. I'm so glad we got this weapon. It had actually been teased to come with the Mezco Jason, and it got dropped. So I'm glad we finally get it all these years later. The battle damaged NECA Jason comes with the axe from the end of the movie. This one I do like a bit more than Mezco's. It has a darker handle. There's not so much of a wood grain on it, but it is a nice paint job on it. Very dark and dirty looking. The axe head itself is much darker as well. It has a lot of blood splatter all over it, which is really cool. Definitely like that. By comparison, it is quite a bit smaller than the Mezco one. And a very different shape as well. And it's another weapon that Jason holds fairly well. However, unlike Mezco, you can't get both hands on this. You can only have it in one hand at a time, which is a little sad. Moving on to the sculpt and the paint. Back with another Mezco figure, I have to give a disclaimer I give every time I review one of the Mezco figures, particularly in Figure Wars, that Mezco goes with more of a cartoony style, and it has to be accepted that it's not going to be an uber-realistic design. Overall, though, I see nothing really wrong with the way this Jason came out sculpt-wise. I think overall he's really well done. Starting up here at the bottom, he's got some nice boots on, a lot of good detail in it. They're mostly just black. There's a little brown shading on it, but they have some little wear and tear on them, some good shreds in the bottom. His shoelaces are detailed. I couldn't really ask for much more. His pants are fairly well sculpted. The paint on it's pretty good as well. This is a gray with kind of a darker wash over parts of it. But there is a lot of nice detail in the pants, a lot of nice sculpted wrinkles and everything, which really gives it a nice look. Coming up here, we have his shirt. His shirt is very much a solid color green. There's a little bit of dark shading done on it, but not a whole lot. But the overall sculpt is pretty okay. It flares out a little bit here at the bottom, which I think is mostly to accommodate articulation. And it looks a little silly. But it's not bad. It also has the pull marks in all the right places with this Jason design. Where it looks like it's pulling off the kind of hunch in his back. I like it. I really do think it looks good. His sleeves as well. They're a little square, his arms. But they're not badly done. It's got his little buttons down here. The bottom of it. And they did capture the correct look from the movie where his arms are sticking out a little too far from those shirt sleeves. He's a little too big of a guy to be wearing this shirt. The hands have always been one of my big complaints on this figure, and overall they're sculpted well and he holds the weapons well, but it drives me nuts that he has this downward facing thumb. It's basically, I, I can't even do that with my own hand really. It's just a really awkward position. And it always bugged me. Mezco did this a lot over the years and had this thumb like this and it's just annoying, and I know it keeps it out of the way, and it lets you put the weapons in his hand easier, but it just looks weird. We see up here he has his collar with his little gray undershirt underneath, and then we could take a look at the face and the mask. The mask is okay, just okay. It has some pretty major seams. There's a big seam going down this side, and not a seam here but it actually is a very angled piece here it's kind of hard to pick up on camera but it doesn't quite have the smooth look that the mask should which is very disappointing but the paint is pretty solid on it the dirt on it is well done he has little chevrons on there as he should his eyes do line up with the mask which is really nice you could see them through there it's fairly movie accurate of course, you can pull it off. One complaint I do have is the entire thing is very, very hard. It's a very hard mask and very hard straps, and it makes it kind of difficult to put it onto the figure sometimes, and it often feels like it's going to break. Underneath here, we have the Jason head, the unmasked head, and it's okay. I do like the paintwork on it, the shading. I like the big bulbous neck they gave him, but I feel like there's two different sides to this head, and they don't mesh, not even in a Jason kind of way. This side looks really deformed and really, really strange. The ears all pressed down, the head's gigantic and messed up looking, the eyes off to the side, the nose is all crooked. 
And this side, to me, looks a little more movie accurate as how he actually was. The ear sticks out a bit more, and he has some just weird texturing and stuff to the head, but it still looks like Jason. Head on, it looks okay, and this side I just don't care for. The back's not bad. There's some good detail on it, just some lumps and garbage like you'd have on Jason. Now you can actually take this head off, let's pop it right off there, and peg in his alternate head. Now while NECA made you buy two different figures, Mezco included the battle damage head right in with the figure, which is kind of nice. And here you can see he has a very similar mask on, basically the same mask we had the other one. This one doesn't have some of the nasty seams, and it looks a little dirtier paint-wise. And then he has this big, gaping wound up there on the top of his head, which is pretty cool. Now this mask is not removable, there's no head underneath this. You can actually almost see, maybe not in this video, but the eyes are recessed further back than they are on the other head, just because it's simply eyes with a mask over them, and no real face detailing. I've actually seen people pride this mask off to see what was down there, and not really much. The other cool thing about this gash is if we take his axe accessory, we can actually jam it in there, and recreate his death at the end of the movie. So you actually have Jason with the axe sticking out of his head. Which I think is pretty cool. Moving on to the sculpt and paint on NECA's Jason. NECA also gave us some nice boots. I don't know if I like them quite as much as Mezco's. Mezco's are more stylized and chunky and messed up looking. These are fairly clean, very realistic looking. He's got his silver detail on here for the loops for his laces. And while they are probably more movie accurate and realistic, something about the Mezco ones just kind of had a more primal, cool look to them. We once again have his gray pants. There's plenty of dirt work done on them, more of a dry brushing effect than a shading, I guess. Which I like. It looks more realistic that he would just have gray pants on and then have this dirt effect over top of it. However, I almost wish there was some darker shading to low light some of the areas on it. It really is kind of missing that. It's just very, very gray. You turn them around and there is very, very little brown detailing. So the back of his pants are pretty much a solid color, which is a little annoying. He does have some blood splatter on his knee. This is Both versions have this mark here. One thing I find interesting with this Jason is that they gave him, like my Predator 2 line that I love so much, they gave him a rubber butt, or more of a rubber diaper, to be honest with you. I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's a little strange. I like it for an articulation sense and a sculpt sense. You don't get the exposed joints up here, but it kind of does look like a diaper to me. I really just don't know how I feel about it. There is some good detailing on it. It looks very similar to the pants. It actually took me a while to realize it was a rubber piece. It's a unique choice on NECA's part. Moving up to the shirt. I really like the shirt on this one. It's pulling apart a little at the bottom here. More of an action look. It's a rubber piece like NECA's been doing with a lot of their shirts lately. It's got his pockets, all the buttons. The wrinkles are great. He has his undershirt up here. All the paint detail is really nice. It's this very dark green, much darker than the Mezco, and a lot of different hues of the same kind of green to highlight and low light different areas. I really dig this paint job. It's very clean and very nice. Really, really like it. They also have the hunch in his back, which is cool, needed for the character. His arms are much less blocky looking, which is nice. These are hard plastic as usual come down here he's got slits up the side of his clothes now i haven't gone back and watched the movie i'm guessing this is probably more movie accurate it makes sense but i don't know which one is actually he does a more wrist exposed his hands are well sculpted very veiny and kind of cool looking his nails are painted which is a nice touch on NECA's part his left hand is this kind of open hand, which I don't mind. It was kind of cool in the Mezco one to have two gripping hands, two different places to put the weapons, but this is still pretty cool. My one gripe is around the hands, it seems like the paint apps go really wonky. You can see here where the slit is in the 
arm, you could actually see the green paint is spilled over onto his arm quite generously, which is really a pain in the butt. And on my battle damage version, the flesh tone spilled over onto the rest of it in a couple places. So opposite problems in the same part of the figure. I've taken a quick look before we get to the head at the battle damage. She has the exact same detail on the pants. The pants are entirely the same. The sculpt is obviously entirely the same. But he does have some extra blood work done up on the chest, which is nice. They didn't just give us the same figure again. There are some reasons to pick up this other version. The mask on this Jason goes the complete opposite route of the Mezco one. I complained the Mezco one was too hard. I think this one's a little too soft. It's a soft rubber just like the shirt and all that stuff. And I had a hell of a time finding one that looked okay. You could even see this one's a little warped. Kind of an odd shape to it, which is disappointing. I've also seen some bad paint apps, not in person, but on eBay I saw one where the chevrons were actually on upside down, which is a little scary. It makes me worried about anyone trying to buy this off the internet. But I do like the dirt and paint scuff on here. It's a little nicer. It's not as dirty looking because this mask was brand new and fairly clean in the movie, so it's not as dramatic as the Mezco one. He's got the paint detail on the snaps here and the little snaps down here at the bottom of the mask, which is cool, though my top one is a little off, which is sad. The mask is very easy to remove because it is all soft rubber. I meant to show off the straps here. They actually have the buckles detailed on the straps, which is really cool. And here we have Jason's head, face only a mother could love. Now, I really like this version of Jason's head. I think they did a great job at NECA. He has some veins bulging out here. It's very lumpy and ugly looking. They have some like red paint detail around the eyes, which is cool. The teeth look pretty cool. He's got his hair lip thing going on. His nose is all crooked. Both sides of the face seem to mesh together. It feels very Jason to me. And I like the detail on the neck as well, being all big and bulbous. Definitely more of a fan of this head sculpt. Paint's okay. I think it's actually a little flat. I could do for a little more shading, but I think they did an okay job. Now, if we're bringing the battle damaged one, this mask, I think, has a little better shape to it on mine. Though it kind of flares out a little at the cut mark up here, which is disappointing. The amount of dirt on it's about the same as the other. And I did forget to mention on the other mask that also with this Jason, you do get a pretty good lineup with his eyes. Though I've seen different masks, depending on how warped they are, they might not be quite so lined up. But it's okay, it's it's decent. Mine came out really good. This one has more cleanliness on the paint on the snaps up here. All the same details on the mask apart from this chip here, where the axe cut him, blood all around it, which is cool. And then we pop that mask off, and we get a brand new Jason head sculpt. And this is my favorite of the bunch, honestly. I love the facial expression, the more pissed off, angry face, the blood just gushing down his face. This is really great. This is a horror fan's dream, I think. Now, it's coming out a little pink on my camera, but it's a very dark crimson red, which I do like, and it pours down onto his neck and kind of follows onto his shirt as well, as I mentioned before. I really like this face. I like the snarling, angry expression, and a lot of the details are the same as the other head, but just really cool. I don't know if it's a paint error or if it's intended, but this eye on mine is looking off to the side, and both eyes seem a little dull. The eyes on the clean Jason were a little more crisp and clean, and then we bring in this one, and they're a little duller looking and not as focused. But then again, he'd been hit in the head with an axe at this point. I don't know how clear his brain would be working at this moment. Unfortunately... I can't get his axe to stay in his head. It will not go in. I don't think it was meant for it. So unlike the Mezco one, we really can't get it in there. If you mess around enough, and I think with the mask on, you can get it to stay, but it's not going to look as good as the Mezco version. For articulation on Mezco's Jason, he has a ball jointed neck. It actually is at the base of his neck where it rotates. Pin socket shoulders, which gives him a fair amount of motion. The up and down isn't great. And then when he rotates, because they're at angles, you get this kind of angular motion. So a little limited there. He also has his bicep swivel. And because his arms are so rectangular, it looks really goofy when you start turning it. So another 
disappointment there. He has a hinge at the elbow. You can just bend right there. He could swivel at the wrist as well as hinge. So good range you can get with his hands. He has a ball joint in the mid torso. I actually think it's one of those barbell shaped ones where it's a ball on either end. I might be wrong though. But you get a good range. You could twist and turn them. The shirt hinders it a little bit and then you get some forward and back motion. And from the waist down, he is purely a statue, no posability, not even a swivel in the foot. So, fairly limited, but what you'd really expect from most of Mezco's figures. And I do like the fact that he always stands up, because he's always stable. For the articulation on the NECA figure, NECA's pulled out all the stops, I think. We have a ball-jointed head, a pretty good range of motion, pin socket shoulders, now these also are a little angled, but it's mostly just because of the rubber shirt, so you can get it out of the way pretty easily. Up and down, not a problem. Bend and rotate at the elbow. Ball jointed wrist, which I think works really well with the exposed sleeves here, or the exposed forearms. Ball jointed, I believe it might actually be a waist joint, but it could be a little further up like it's been on the Ash and Freddy Krueger figures lately. He has a little rubber pants down here, concealing a leg joint that lets it go forward and back and out to the side, as well as rotate, bend and swivel at the knee, and a ball jointed foot. Unfortunately, the bottom of the pants are still hard plastic, so it does hinder that joint a little bit. But when it comes down to it, we basically have a NECA figure, NECA who used to make figures that were basically statues. And this is on par with some of the Marvel Universe figures, which I consider fairly highly articulated figures. So I'm pretty impressed with what NECA crammed into this guy. Overall, this is probably one of the closest figure wars I've ever done. It really, really surprises me how neither of these figures really shines above the other, which is surprising and a little disappointing. When I heard NECA had gotten the Friday the 13th license back, I was expecting amazing things. They've really been stepping it up with their other figures. The remake Jason was an incredible piece. I really loved that figure. And knowing they were going to go back and do the part 3 and part 4, figures that Mezco had done way beforehand, I was thinking NECA was going to knock it out of the park. And at this stage in the game, all I could say is both figures are pretty evenly recommendable. The new NECA one is very movie accurate, very highly detailed, well painted, well sculpted, super highly articulated. You get the extra accessory of the spear gun that did not come with the Mezco one, if you buy both. But the mask is a big deal. The fact that it's hard to find one that looks just right. And the fact that to get everything with these two figures, you have to buy two at $15 a pop. The Mezco one's lacking articulation, but it comes with two pretty good accessories that he could hold. He could even dual wield his weapons. It comes with the extra head with the battle damage, so it's all there in one package. And really, I don't know this could be a draw they both have really high points and really low points and i really don't know what to call it at i am totally stumped but i recommend both figures all three figures that is highly highly definitely pick them up the NECA one's obviously easy to find hidden stores right now if you want to go and get both I think NECA is a good way to go. If you want one and done, you might want to see what you can get a Mezco one for. Hunt on eBay or maybe Amazon or something. If you get one at a good price and you just want one Part 3 Jason, that could be your better option. So let me know, since I can't make up my mind, give me your opinion, post it down below, let me know who you think wins this figure war. And you could also Come over to the Outside the Box Reviews Facebook page and leave your opinion there. I'll leave a link in the bottom bar. Come by there and discuss which Jason you think is the best one. And until next time, this has been another Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.